Hello everyone, it's Dawn here and welcome. I hope you enjoyed seeing the unboxing yesterday if you managed to catch it. If you didn't, the projects are going to be a surprise, but I'm sure they'll be a delight. Now this has got a lot of heavily embroidered elements in it, but you don't have to do embroidering. But I thought for the first project of this series that we're going to be doing, we would do a bit of embroidering. So I have used this die, this is from box 34. I've used this die to create that cross stitching effect. And I've used a couple of the butterfly trails to create that. So for those who may not have done embroidery or cross stitch before, I'm not going to do the whole lot because we'll be here all day. But what I am going to do on a piece of scrap card, I'm going to show you the process. So I'm just going to slide that over there out of the way. Now, a true embroiderer will probably tell you, you should never tie a knot. Well, as I'm not a true embroider, embroiderer, mm. I am going to tie a knot. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to tie a knot, just a small knot, right in the end of my piece of yarn. This is one of the pinks, this beautiful soft pink that came with the box. But if you've got embroidery threads of your own, that's absolutely fine. If you've got your own embroidery threads, you don't have to stick to these colours. You can use whatever you like, or if you haven't got embroidery, you can you can draw in these marks with a pen or whatever you like. So what we're going to do, we're going to start at the back. This is cross stitch, just for those who've not done it before. So we're going to go from the back and come round to the front. Then what we're going to do, I'm going to hold this up as easily as I can for you, or as close as I can. We're going to go down. Oops, we're not going to do that. We are going to go down through the next diagonal stitch like that, or the next diagonal hole, and we're going to pull it like that. And then we're going to come back down again. It's difficult to see. Oh, sorry about that. So we're going to come underneath, and if we can find that hole there, we're going to go up there. We're going to pull that there. And so what we're really doing, we're sewing across the two diagonals, which is why it's called a cross stitch because they cross over each other. So we'll do that once more, just once more. So we're going to go up, we're going to go up. We're going to go across to the top diagonal stitch or hole. We're going to come down and we're going to go, if we can find it, up through that stitch or that hole there. And we're going to go down through that one there. So if you always end at the top and then to go across to for the next stitch, you will come up through that hole there. But we won't do that now. So that is our cross stitching. Now to do the butterfly trails, that's even easier. We're going to be doing cross back stitching, I beg your pardon. So I'm just going to sheet slightly. Now you probably use a different, or you could use the same thread if you wanted to. I'm just going to use the same thread just so that I don't have to re-thread the needle. So I'm being lazy. So we're going to go up, not to the first hole, but to the second hole. And then we're going to go back down through the first hole like that. Then we're going to come up above the stitch that we've just created. But it's difficult to do it when you can't see what you're doing. So we're going to come up there above that stitch that we've just created. Then we're going to go back, which is why it's called a back stitch, because you keep on going back on yourself. So we'll do that once more. So we're going to come up through that hole above the stitch that we've just done. We're going to go down, back through that stitch. And then to start again, we will come up, not that one. Or you could just do a running stitch if you wanted to. If you didn't want to do back stitch, you could just literally go up one hole and down the other. So you'd be coming up there. And likewise with your cross stitch, you don't have to do every hole. You could do every alternate hole if you want to. So that's just the process. And even this one, you could do the same here. If you don't want to do cross stitch, you could do satin stitch, which is where you go up one there. You go down across diagonally, but then what you do, you come up through this hole here, if you can find it. Hang on, just a second. So yeah, you'd come up there and you just keep on going across diagonally like that. So that is called 
satin stitch. Or again, you could just do running stitch up there. So there's just several ways of doing our embroidery. But once you've done all that, well, once you've done the cross stitch and the running stitch, the way we've done it here, you will have a piece that looks like that. Now, I am going to put mine, if I can find it, oh, there it is, on a six by six card. This is five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So we've got a small mat and on the back of here, because we've got this stitching, we need our adhesive to be above that. So I have just put some foam tape on there so that it rises or it lifts above that stitching. I mean, it looks wonderful. Anyone who's done cross stitch, especially cross stitch or embroidery knows it looks fabulous on the front, but on the back, it doesn't look quite so fabulous, especially cross stitch. So we're going to take the backing tape off very quickly. It seems to be behaving itself quite nicely. So that's good news. So we need that lifted. And so I'm going to turn it over, make sure I get it the right way around and make sure we've got our card the right way around. Now you can have this as a top fold or as a side fold, but I'm going to keep my fold on the side because that's the way I prefer it. Occasionally I'll do a top fold, but in principle or in general, I should say, I tend to keep it the fold on the side. So there we go. There is our trail. But where is the butterfly? I hear you say, well, we're just about to do that now. Now, I have cut the butterfly out. Now, I don't know whether it's just my cutting or whether it's my die cutter. But when I cut my butterfly, the embroidery holes didn't cut out. It missed it completely. So I don't know whether I've done anything wrong or whether there's a fault in the die. But I will inquire about that and find out if anyone else has had the same problem or whether it's just me. But either way, it still cuts out very nicely. But I wanted a bit of backing. This is the die. I'll show you. This is the die. And... These holes were supposed to cut out, but for whatever reason, mine didn't. But I will inquire as to why that happened, but or didn't happen. But it doesn't matter. It's still going to look beautiful. And these are all cutting areas. I thought they were embossing areas, to tell you the truth, but they're not. They're cutting areas. So they do cut out. And what I have done, I've cut the die out as it is, but I've also used the die once again. I'll show you what I did. I'll just slide that over there so you can still see it, but we need a bit of space. Oh, I've just cut my finger now so I can't pick it up. I This is a perfect opportunity to use your own paper as well as the fabulous papers that came within the box. Now I've got this gorgeous rainbow paper. I can't add a link because I've had it so long I can't remember where I got it. But what I did is I laid it down. In fact, I'd advise you to do, if you've got beautiful paper like this, I'd advise you to do this on the back. But I'll do it on here so that you can see what I'm doing. And what I did, I used my pencil. I'm not going to draw it around on this, but I used my pencil, but I used it, as I say, on the back, drew around it and cut it out. So I just drew around with a pencil and then used my scissors to cut the die out or die piece out. And when I'd done that, I was left with a piece like that. And what I'm going to do with that is I am going to use, actually, I'm going to use my runner tape just for, the, for this little section. I won't use it for all of it. Now I'll just pop the die, or die cut, to one side. And I want this to sit flat, this particular piece. So I can use, I can get away with using my runner tape for this. I could have used glue. I'm going to in the next bit, but for this bit, we'll use a runner tape. So we'll just put that there. And I'm going to put it slightly over so that there's no gap between the trail and the butterfly. So I'm going to sit that there like that, pop that out the way. And I am going to use glue for the next bit because I want it to stay. But what I am going to do, I'm going to bend the wings up just a little bit like that to give it a bit of flight or movement. And I'm just going to put some glue on this bit here, this thick bit here, if it will come out. Come on out, you jump. Let's see if we can put it down and squeeze it that way. So, okay, we won't use glue. Glue's, glue is misbehaving. Plan B, we'll use another bit of runner tape. It'll be fine. So I'm just gonna put a piece of runner tape down there. I should have stuck with my first instinct, shouldn't I? And that's okay. So we'll put that down there. It was working a minute ago. So we'll just hold that down and then lift it. This is the red line tape, or it's the equivalent to red line tape, so it should stick. And I have cut the body line 
Actually, the body liner was a bit, bit smaller than I expected it to be, but it's okay. It's absolutely fine. And again, because my glue stick is, or my glue is playing up, we are going to just run some tape down there, tape runner down there. And I'm going to stick that through there like that. So there is our butterfly finished. You can leave it like that if you wish, and that's a perfectly acceptable card. But I have used one of the stamps and a little piece of vellum, or parchment paper, I think it is. And I've used, well, actually this is a, this is an ink pad from a previous paper craft society, but I thought it fitted this beautiful pink. And I've put, I've used the stamp that says, celebrate being you. I was going to emboss it, but then changed my mind. So craft is for prerogative. So I'm just going to run a piece of the strip of runner tape across here and because this is runner tape it shouldn't show too much so let's hope it doesn't i don't think it's going to i think we're going to get away with that you know so let's just get rid of any debris and i'm just going to stick that level with the base of the cross stitch line and i'm going to stick that so there's my tip of the day. Sometimes it's very difficult to use an adhesive that doesn't show through vellum or parchment paper. So if you use one of these runner tapes, it doesn't seem to, that seems to do it. That seems to do the trick without it showing. So there we go. There is our cross stitch border butterfly card. That's a long title for a card, isn't it? But if you keep to this process, or if you're very good at, if you're proficient in embroidery and cross stitch, and you've got your own methods by all means go ahead or if you've got the book if if you've got the book to this project set have a look in there see what others have done gain ideas but it's a wonderful set and i really have enjoyed doing this and i should be very cross with lou collins because now i'm addicted to doing cross stitch on cards but it's great fun i'm not i'm not cross with her at all i'm very grateful it was a wonderful set so i hope you've enjoyed this card and if you haven't subscribed to this channel already and you're enjoying these projects please do hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell because i have got four projects in this or in this series from this particular box 34 and the next one will be tomorrow so please do pop back tomorrow and find out what elements i use and what i get up to so i'll see you tomorrow and in the meantime have a great day stay safe everybody take care and as always happy crafting bye bye for now